There are people throughout the world that have interesting stories to tell. Stories of heroism, acts of kindness, near-death experiences, successes, and failures. You usually hear of these stories from people that live in another state or country. But what about the stories from within your own community? Everyone has a story to tell. And by everyone, we mean your neighbor, your coworker, the person behind you at church, people you interact with on a daily basis, or maybe even you. Welcome to the DTV Podcast. I'm Brennan Mathern, and I'll be your host as we speak to some of the most interesting people on the Bayou. As we were talking about potential guests for this podcast, we talked about so many from the older generations that have stories to tell. But this guy stood out because he's writing his own story now, and it's so unique, we wanted to feature him and highlight what he's been doing. Known on the internet as Rattlesnake Dre, he is Andre Brunet. Andre, thank you so much for joining us, man. No problem, buddy. So let's first things first, let's get started by telling everybody what it is you do and, and what's going on in your YouTube channel. Okay, so first of all, uh, I love adventure, I love to explore, but most of all, I love treasure hunting. And um, it started when I was very, very young. Uh, I watched one too many episodes of uh, Indiana Jones, and that was basically it. I wanted to do that for the rest of my life, and here we are. So treasure hunting, and, and you know, we've watched some of your videos. In fact, uh, we have a little clip right here we're going to play uh, of some of the reactions to some of the finds, uh, so we'll play that right now. Oh, dude, so. look what we just found. I thought, thought this was a Mardi Gras bead. That's a silver cross. Oh, damn. With the rosary. Right, guys, this is a very, very old padlock. Look at that. It's a Louisiana tax tip. Oh, there's no way that's real, but that is beautiful. There's no way that's real. Guys, I am super, super excited to show you this. I found something incredible. This is a heavy, heavy brass. This, I believe, is a wax stamp. All right, guys, I'm not sure what kind of coin it is, but I can make out a date, 1883. Guys, we got silver. Holy smokes. 1901 Barber Dye, Arlene's Mint, too, made right here in Louisiana. Whoa. There it is. Silver. Yes, it is. I called it, too. It's another uh, pendant. religious pendant. Yeah, yeah. Boom! Silver. This is a seated 1875. Oh, my God, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Okay, oh my gosh. this is a Masonic coin. Oh, my gosh. I can Are you see the symbol. Me? Yeah, I'm really You're nervous right now, right now. <laughs> holy crap wow baby 1937 Whoa. Oh, silver coin there you go my man damn it's all yours Dude. so hit me up rattlesnake dre if you got a yarn you think you got some cool treasures in it i'm gonna find it so very interesting stuff. We were kind of joking behind the scenes about being like a Cajun Indiana Jones. So that, that played uh, right into it as you were talking about it. Before we get more into the treasure hunting, because I'm, I'm so interested in this, uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Our, our favorite question is going to be to ask uh, the same that we get asked all the time here on the Bayou. Who's your mom and dad? Tell us about your family and where you're from. Right. So um, you've already introduced me. I'm Andre Brunet. I'm uh, 35 years old. I've lived on the Bayou most of my life. I moved away for four years, and then I moved back. This is my home. This is where I want to stay. Um, my mother is Debbie Rishu, and my dad's Dean Brunet. And the reason why I became who I am is because my dad collected coins and uh, little antiques, and my mom collected depression glass, and she was also heavy into antiques. So even as a young boy, I would I'd be told before we'd walk in, do not touch anything and then we'd walk into these uh antique stores and thrift stores and i think that's where i started to get intrigued with the history behind things and why my mom thought a plate was important and why my dad thought an old coin was you know important enough to pick up in a safe so when i was little i was taught the importance of why these things were important and uh it basically it's the history about it the coins are no longer made 
the dishes that my mom collects are one of a kind or, you know, they don't make them anymore. So if you break it, it's going forever. So like I said, I watched Indiana Jones one too many times and then that's when I became the Bayou's Indiana Jones. <laughs> so so tell us a little bit too about your professional life. Obviously this is a hobby and, and it's a sort of coming on as a life of its own with with your with social media uh but what do you do what's what's your nine to five like right so i'm a salesman for coca-cola i've been working there for about four years but any day i have off or any afternoon i get off early enough i'm uh, out in the fields or walking through the woods and you know doing a little bit of research and you could find different treasures everywhere i've found stuff from in the middle of the woods all the way onto the bias side of Bailafouche, you could pull things that uh, you know are unbelievable and you wouldn't think would be there. So, listening to your background and, and like why, I, I sort of heard your why about why you you uh, you you treasure these things, why you go after these things. But I have to know how it got started. Uh, you, you know, in, in sort of watching the videos and, and kind of talking about you b- before we uh, before we had the show. Uh, I, we were kind of joking that, like, you know, metal detecting and, and you know, finding things on the beach, uh, you know, maybe going to Fouchon Beach and, and looking for things. That's something you do, like, maybe with a, a trip with your family. It's a little thing you do when you're a kid, but then your interest goes elsewhere. Uh, it, it's not something that – it's not a commonplace hobby that, that you see very often. So how did you take just something that's just a, a regular hobby and, and blow it up into something that's become your absolute passion? Um, so it started when I was about 10 years old I got a, a metal detector for Christmas from uh, my mother and I've had one ever since. It's just in the last probably five years, it got really serious. Um, so I, of course, when you're 10, you don't have the knowledge you have now, but once, uh, I, I, I went to college at Nickel State for a while and I was able to study history there and I realized, uh, learning that. Uh, Nickel State is actually on a, uh, a campsite for one of the Civil War um, battles. So when I learned that, I decided like, hey, let me pull that old metal detector out and I'm going to start really getting into it. So one thing led to another and every couple of months I would go out and then one day I was driving along the highway and I saw a guy in a field metal detecting. So I stopped and ran out in the field like a crazy person because I wanted to talk to him, and uh, I ended up meeting him. His uh, his name's Greg Babin. He's a friend of mine. We actually got so close he served in my wedding, and uh, we still hunt today, actually. But uh, he's the one that kind of showed me the ropes and said, like, well, if you research here, this is here. But he had basically no social media presence, and uh, I took it and I just ran with it. So I kind of made the path of my own with social media and it's been it's been pretty good uh, I started on uh, Facebook and then I got a YouTube channel going and now believe it or not I'm on TikTok which there's a, a crazy story because the, one of the last things I found I posted a video on TikTok and I think it's over a hundred thousand views on there so well, and, and that's ultimately uh, where I learned about you. Uh, I, I saw the video of, of you finding the Masonic coin, and, and the reaction was priceless, and, and probably how I would have reacted finding that. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that story, about where you were uh, finding it? And, and ultimately, I understand you've actually returned it to a lodge. Right. So uh, a little over two weeks ago, my uh, unfortunately, my grandpa passed away, and I have family members that are spread across the United States. They're in the uh, some are in the Navy, and uh, they all came down. And they're I have all girl cousins, and they're intrigued with what I'm doing with the treasure hunting. So I took them on a little trip, and then when we got back to my grandparents' house, which I've metal detected a hundred times before, uh, I wanted to show them how to work the machine. The only thing, the only, well, the weird thing about it is. Um, I used to metal detect my grandma's yard like years ago, so I didn't have the proper machine. It really didn't give enough depth, and um, I was just showing them really and truly how it worked. And lo and behold, I dig a hole, and there's a green coin sitting right in the hole. And I knew it was important because I've dug up enough items that I said, this is something important. So I waved everybody over, so I had the whole crowd of my family was there. 
and uh, just I didn't believe that it was. If you could hear in the video, I thought it was a large scent, you know, mid 1800s. But uh, as soon as I rubbed that dirt away and I saw the, uh, you know, the Masonic symbol is when I started trembling and I couldn't really catch my breath because I, I knew it was important. There's not a lot of things out there. And with all the, you know, it's like it's a mysterious group of guys. And and I did I did return it. I, I put that video on Facebook. I was contacted by multiple Masons. I was actually offered some considerable money for it, but uh it's not why I'm doing this. I make enough money with my job that uh, you know, I'm not trying to be a sellout or whatever you would call it. Well and but that that does bring me to my next question, uh, because I, I did have that that question for you is is have you sold any of the items? Have you found anything? Can you tell us about your most valuable thing that you have found? I, actually, I haven't sold any. I've sold one thing in my entire, uh, I guess, adventures. I found an old Esso sign, which is an old oil field company sign, and it was about six foot across and about five foot high. And the only reason why I sold it is because I had it inside my house, and my wife is like, look, you have to get rid of this thing or I'm getting rid of you. So uh, actually, I sold it to a guy that collects that kind of stuff. But um, I have a I have a an array of stuff that I'd rather I'd just rather give it to someone that um, would appreciate it. You know, I, I could tell when I meet certain people and they come see the relic room that I have, and if they're super intrigued or if they're very very interested, I just find more joy in in letting them have it. And I mean, guilty as I'm I, I may seem. I feel really great about it, so it's not like I'm doing it, you know. You, you mentioned uh, that that you've done a lot of things here locally. Uh, do you primarily uh, go on these adventures locally here in Lafouche Parish? Do you kind of spread out uh, when if you go on a family vacation? Do you take your equipment with you, and like how does that work? So I, I mainly stay in Lafouche Parish just because our, our our history is so rich and is unbelievable. And I, I did I learned a lot in school, but uh, I learned a lot more once I got out and I started experiencing all these things. You know, I, I didn't. Re- I was taught that yeah, the Spanish were here and then the French came, but it wasn't until I dug up uh, an 1804 Spanish real that I realized that there were actual Spaniards here from Spain. You know, there were there were pirates here. There was the French that came along. There were Germans here, and this is you know this is parts of history that when I learned in school. It really didn't hit me as hard as it does when you pull something out of the ground that hadn't seen the light of day in 200 years. And to know that, you know, I have coins in my house that were quite possibly held by pirates or some of the first settlers that, you know, ever came to Louisiana. So speaking of that, uh, you, you've already mentioned a few things. Uh, w- when you look back at your collection, can you can you point out one or, or maybe a group of some of the most interesting things that you found here in Lafouche, especially something that you might not have, uh, you know, thought that you'd find? Right. Well, I never I never thought I'd dig up a, a, a real, but that's a 1804 uh, Spanish real. So that was that was a hand hammered coin that was, uh, you know, a chunk of silver and they smashed it with the uh, impression um probably my f- favorite find is probably a tie between the masonic coin and i also found a gold ring with a london blue topaz in it and my wife wore that on our uh, on our wedding day as something borrowed oh, wow. something blue because she had to give me that ring back that's mine it's not <laughs> hers um but that ring is actually handmade it's not uh, it's not symmetrical, like the basket that the stone sits in is not symmetrical. So I had a couple people look at it, and they said it's definitely over 100 years old, uh, wow. but it could be 200 years old. And it's a London blue topaz, so that definitely came from uh, overseas. And I found that in a location where they had a plantation that had burned down. So I'm guessing that maybe that was lost in the fire or you know lost maybe previously. You, you were talking earlier about um, the gentleman at Nichols, and, and you've mentioned uh, being with your family. Is this something that you do with family? Do you have other friends? Are, are there anyone else that you go on these adventures with? I have I have a couple of friends that are very interested. They they went out, they bought their own metal detectors, and I've took them on trips. Um, if they find anything better than me that day, they're never invited again. <laughs> so that's just Sort of a, like a fishing trip. Right, right, right. If you do better than me, you're not coming back. Uh, but I have a bunch of my family members that are huge fans of mine, and I try to take them as 
much as I can. Um, but it, it's it's surprising on how many people have accepted such a weird hobby that you know you see you don't typically see a middle aged person doing this. It's usually a retired guy on a beach, you know, with a pot belly out to here, which I'm not far from it. So. <laughs> But but you you're bringing uh, you know a new aspect and, and a new vision to to the hobby and when you uh, when you throw in social media aspect and you're able to narrate and and bring life to this it's sort of uh, I I feel like it gives this hobby uh, something w- with more interest you're right if it's just you know a retired person just kind of casually looking for things that's not interesting but someone you know a younger person looking for this and and highlighting their adventures on social media i think that's that's what is it's attracting to the audience and and for our audience obviously the the intrigue is that that you're from the bayou and that you're finding things here in lafouche parish i mean it's it's already just listening to you it's fascinating to hear all of the different things that that are just sitting in our backyards right and i have found some unbelievable things right in my backyard and my father-in-law's backyard and I've learned through – when this all started, I was definitely just looking for gold and silver coins. I thought I was going to get rich. You know, just one day I'd stumble across something, which I'm still out there doing it. I'm not giving up on that. But I learned through the process of what I what I do is it's the stories. You know, um, after I find these things, you know, I'm not super attached to it. After I find it and that uh, – initial adrenaline rush wears off it doesn't mean as much as that moment and that moment i mean as you can see in the last video in the masonic coin i mean it's the best adrenaline rush you'll ever have you know i've done some pretty crazy stuff before bungee jumping and you know all these different things and nothing compares to when you flip a patch of grass over and there's a silver coin that you know is a hundred plus years old sitting there so on that note, uh, and you've already told us a couple, do you, do you have a really good story uh, from any of the adventures that you've gone on that uh, that that you can that maybe our listeners would be interested in? Um, I sure do. I, I have a couple of them, so I'm going to sure. start with, with one and I'll bounce to another one. Um, so I recently got married in December. Beautiful girl. Congratulations. Thank you. I don't know why she's hanging out with me, but <laughs> I'm not going to tell her any difference. Uh, so... Uh, my father-in-law lives right here in La Rose. I'm not going to give you the specific area because I'm still metal detecting in his yard, so I don't want any claim <laughs> jumpers. But um, the story goes, and there's there's pictures out there. I'm going to have to find these pictures and post them on my uh, social media account. But they dug a pool in his backyard in the 70s maybe. And if you've ever watched the movie Poltergeist, you know how this story goes. They started digging the pool, and... Out comes chunks of wood, and then a jawbone, and then full skeletons. So they dug up, it was eight or nine different um, skeletons, and had to stop the uh, the job site or whatever, called in LSU, and come to find out there was a graveyard there at one time. There was a church adjacent to the property, and there was a graveyard. They had removed the headstones, never removed the graves. Wow. So, and if you go to their house and you walk out the back door, the pool is off to the right because they didn't allow them to dig any further because when they did the ground penetrating radar, there was more bodies there. So, and the the bodies are six foot deep. So my, my metal detector goes a foot, foot and a half deep. So I'm not reaching any of those. You know, I would never dig up in a graveyard. I have enough creepy stuff in my house that I don't need to be bringing any extra bad juju home. Right. But uh, what they did do is when they dug that pool, they threw the dirt uh, along the side of the property. So some of that original dirt had different pieces of broken glass. And I, one day I went down and I'm, I was just kind of looking. I had no metal detector. And I saw these little tiny glass beads. And uh, I was able to grab one of the beads. And when I started pulling them up, another one came and another one came. And... From doing enough treasure hunting, I realized that the chain that the beads were on were silver. And as I pulled the chain up bead by bead, all of a sudden, a crucifix popped out. And it was a rosary. So I started sifting through the sand very carefully, and I was able to find about half the beads that went along with the rosary. Uh, Went home, painstakingly pieced it back together, and I have it um, set up in my room on display. 
Uh, I had a few comments like people were like, you need to go put that back. But I think the story, you know, without without them digging that pool, they would have never known that the the bodies were there. Right. And I'm very respectful of it. I have it in its own little case. And, uh, you know, the story gets to be told. And uh, nobody could have it. A bunch of people wanted it, but it's mine now. So <laughs> That is fascinating. And, and to think, uh, you know, we, we joke about earlier about what could be right there in our backyard, but, uh, you know, an entire graveyard. I, I don't think any of us would, would dream of that in our wildest dreams. Right. All right. So before we start to, to wrap things up, we definitely want to find out. You, you've talked about social media. How can people find you online? You could find me on my Facebook page, Andre Brunet. Um, I have uh, all the rest of my social media is YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And that's all under Rattlesnake Dre. Uh, you can Google the hashtag Rattlesnake Dre and a laundry list of things will come up. Uh, if you Google Andre Brunet on YouTube, some guy that plays a violin comes up. So you have to go uh, Google Rattlesnake Dre. Um one more thing I wanted to point out, uh, in 2019, I made it to the History Channel, and I was on an episode of The Return of Shelby the Swamp Man, which uh, I never had a conversation with them. I was on the tail end of his show, because I think some issues came up with the show, and they needed uh, a couple of guys from Louisiana. I was lucky enough to have met a producer a while back, showed him all my stuff, and he was super excited. So uh, you could find that episode on youtube just do not go read the comments the internet is brutal uh, if you're having a couple <laughs> beers on a friday night and you want a good laugh go ahead and read those comments but um yeah you can find me on all the social media uh platforms like i said rattlesnake dre there's not too many of us that's just me <laughs> <laughs> all right andre at the end of every podcast we have a round of rapid fire questions for each guest and as you might expect they're related to life down the bayou so you can give us a one word answer or expand on your answer if you feel necessary to explain it's entirely up to you so are you ready gotcha i'm ready all right so what's your go-to order at a down the bayou restaurant probably uh roast beef po boy and cheese sticks i say cheese sticks because uh when i was on the history channel i was famous for like only two weeks <laughs> but I did get free cheese sticks at, uh, I don't know, where it was? Meemaw's, I think. So if you see me at Meemaw's and you want to send me an order of cheese sticks, I'll get up and shake your hand because uh, that's my favorite. I've renewed my love of cheese sticks because that's one of the few things my kids eat at a restaurant. So we get that every time it's an option. And it's hard to go wrong with a roast beef po' boy. So right. I'm right there with you. All right. So let's get the more difficult questions. Potato salad in the gumbo or on the side? I'll dump it in the gumbo. <laughs> All day. <laughs> okay. Uh, jambalaya, red or brown? I don't even like to say red jambalaya. I don't <laughs> like it. I actually haven't eaten that in over a decade. I only like brown jambalaya. All right. Uh, Pedro, cutthroat or follow suit? I follow suit. I don't know anybody that plays, uh, you know, cutthroat. Um, that might be a up the buy a thing, like they say. <laughs> so I'm a down the buy a boy. It, it could very well be. All right. Here's the, here's the kicker. When a boat is passing and you're in the car, is the bridge open or closed? The bridge is open, and, I mean, it pisses you off regardless, but <laughs> that's what I think, because I, I seem to always catch that. You know, when the oil field kind of slowed down, uh, people didn't realize that when you do catch the bridge, don't be too pissed off, because that means all these guys are working, so that's a good thing, but it does suck to sit at that dang bridge. It, it's, it's not anyone's uh, favorite thing to do, but... All right, uh, that will do it for our second episode of the DTB podcast. We want to thank our guest, Andre Brunet, a.k.a. Rattlesnake Dre. Make sure you give him a follow on social media. He's Andre Brunet on Facebook and Rattlesnake Dre on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Andre, it sounds like you're doing uh, some, you're preserving history, which is uh, you know, part of our, our goal and, and mission here at the DTB podcast. So I, I think you were a great guest to have on right at the beginning. Uh, this is fascinating stuff, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people will be heading over to social media to give you a follow. We really appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. And uh, I just want to say one other thing. Uh, you know, if you're a young kid or a young guy, uh, get out. and Video games are great, you know, but get out, get dirty, go exploring. You know, there's so much of our history that's unknown, 
and with the things that I'm doing, I'm finding everything from unknown battlefields from the Civil War to uh, I've even found a few wedding rings that a couple guys lost. One was in a duck blind. I got paid a hundred bucks for that. So <laughs> buy a metal detector; it'll pay off. You know, get out there. <laughs> it's 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 very interesting, and and we really appreciate you coming on. And uh, I I know I'm going to check out some more of those uh, videos. In fact, I think my kids will like them a lot too. So uh, definitely appreciate it, man. Thank you. No problem. See you guys later. All right, you can subscribe to the DTB Podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at the DTB Podcast. You can also follow Bless Your Heart Nonprofit on Facebook or on Twitter at BYH Nonprofit. And don't forget you can donate to Bless Your Heart Nonprofit on Venmo at Bless Your Heart Nonprofit and on PayPal at Bless Your Heart Nonprofit at gmail.com. That'll do it for us on the DTV Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for our next episode. Until then, this is Brennan Mathern. Thank you for joining us, and we'll hope you all come back.